Thanks for joining us today to, at our live webinar. Uh, my name is Jason Pettit, and I'm the Creative Director here at American Business Systems and also one of our business coaches. Uh, glad you could join us today. Uh, we have a ton of great information we're going to go over today on our webinar. And, uh, you know, when, when individuals start checking in with us and, and want to ask questions about the business, they usually have two main questions. Uh, the first one is always, how much is the investment, to make sure they're qualified for it. Uh, the second one is usually, uh, how much income can I make? And then usually the third one is, uh, how do I get clients? Uh, but we're going to focus in on that second question today, the true earning potential of a medical billing business. So we're going to give you lots of stats and figures of uh, what kind of revenue you can generate with a business like this. As we get started, uh, I know people are still joining us here today. Um, I'll go ahead and reintroduce myself again. Uh, my name is Jason Pettit, Creative Director here at American Business Systems and uh, also a business coach here. And I've been with the company about five years, and um, that's uh, a good portion of the 20 years that we've actually been in business here at American Business Systems. Uh, started back in the 80s, and we're coming up to our 20-year anniversary in February of next year. So some of you might be new and just joining us uh, and getting to know our, our company, and so a lot of times we get the question, who is American Business Systems and what do you guys do? Uh, well, first and foremost, if you glance at our website, uh, you've probably noticed that we say we're the fastest way to start your medical billing business, and that's guaranteed. Uh, we've helped over 1,500 people uh, from all walks of life, uh, just like you, um, manufacturing, real estate, CPAs, uh, individuals from sales and marketing, uh, retirees. I've even uh, talked with a couple of college students that came straight out of college and launched a business instead of going into corporate America. Um, so we, we help individuals get into medical billing, and the way that we do that is by using our proprietary systems and our marketing program that we've developed over 20 years. Uh, this is a web-based system, I claim an EMRX, and it is uh, web-based, cloud-based, 24-7 access. Uh, doctors love using the system, and the good news is you, doctors can only get the system through you, our ABS licensee. Uh, so how do you become an ABS licensee? Well, uh, the best place to, to start, and maybe how some of you found us, is going direct to our main website, absystems.com. There's a lot of great information there. And some of you probably already have access to our virtual brochure. Um, that's where we go into a lot more detail about the business opportunity, um, what's included in the business package, uh, some of the income and costs associated with the business, how to help how we help you get clients, our training and support. And um, if you haven't found your way to have access to that yet, contact your rep and they'd be happy to walk you through that. Uh, by the way, in business for 20 years, we do have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. If you would like to stop by our office and uh, meet the crew here, we're based in Keller, Texas, which is just in between Dallas and Fort Worth. And uh, if you want to contact your rep, We'll make a, a scheduled appointment for you to come out here and meet us, and we'd love to have you stop by. But one way or another, uh, we hope to get you to Texas so we can meet live and uh, have you join one of our live training workshops. When you become a licensee, uh, we have five days that we set aside to help you plan your business. Um, the next upcoming live workshop is September 16th through the 20th, and I will say that's probably going to be a pretty full class. Uh, a lot of folks get their summer vacations and kiddos back into school, and uh, September tends to be uh, the first opportunity to jump into launching a new business like this. Uh, moving ahead, we have uh, our, our founder, Patrick Phillips, that I'm going to introduce to you. Uh, he's an accomplished author. Uh, he's published in uh, books and magazines, uh, several uh, personal improvement books, and also a really unique book that he wrote um, just for our licensees, which is the one on the right, Cash Crunch to Cash Flow. And that's something that you can give out to your potential doctor clients, and it demonstrates to them how you could improve their revenue cycle. It's got a lot of great information. And without further ado, I will introduce our founder, uh, Patrick Phillips, and my personal mentor. Patrick, take it away. 
<laughs> Sorry, Jason, I was on mute. <laughs> Thank you very Welcome much. back. Yeah, I appreciate the intro. And, folks, this is going to be exciting because today we're focusing on the thing that, uh, you know, probably is most important to people as they get into a business, and that is what is the profit potential of that business. So uh, let's just jump right in there. I'm going to move forward here and just talk about for a moment the fact that uh, we're a part of the uh, healthcare business. Billing and Management Association, a nationwide organization uh, that has a magazine called Billing Journal. And in this uh, issue, as you can see, uh, there's a whole article here on where is our industry headed. So, Jason, I just wanted to, uh, why don't you read that quote to him and talk a little bit about where, where we're moving with health care. Uh, well, you know, we estimate that the expected growth in the medical billing industry at just under 6% per year. Um, health care is clearly one of the best sectors in a weak economic environment. Uh, if, if you've been in any other types of industry, I know uh, back a few years ago I was in the mortgage industry, there's a lot of suffering uh, with, <laughs> with industries that are not in a growth mode, that are in a decline, and there's cuts and layoffs. Uh, healthcare is one industry that is on the rise, and I um, think we can attribute that to a lot of different factors, but uh, one of the common ones that I hear is we tend to uh, as a as a nation, not be we're not getting more healthy, we're getting less healthy. So I think that's one of the big reasons. <laughs> that's a, that's a good point. <laughs> as, as long as mode. and as long as there's human beings uh, and doctors uh, and insurance companies, uh, even the government itself, of course, they'll always be billing, right? Somebody has to bill for all of those uh, visits to the doctor. That's right. All right, so let's move to the next slide here where I'm going to show you a little bit about health spending. Uh, we just grabbed this out of that article there, and it's a terrific uh, reference because look at the growth of health care spending in the United States from two, uh, 1960, uh, $27, uh, well, this is in billions, 27 up to 2020. So within the next, uh, what, seven years from the 2010 number there, uh, we're almost doubling the amount of money that will be spent in the United States on health care. So, folks, if you're getting into any business uh, and looking at uh, an opportunity, I would say that the bars uh, need to be going up like this, and this is definitely a growth industry. Here's another way of looking at that. By the way, this is from the chcf.org uh, website here, and this is major programs as a share of the federal budget. So as you can see, all the different uh, things that money are spent on here in the United States between 1970 and 2010 uh, Medicare and Medicaid are, are just right up there with the growth of all these things. Other things are up and down, but these two uh, continually grow. And then to look at it another way, uh, out of this article that, that I just showed you there in the Billing Journal, uh, out of all the money that's spent in the United States on revenue cycle, that's all the money that's brought in for doctors and, and technology, there's about, uh, looks like uh, uh, just a huge $73 billion, and this is $9 billion in physician medical billing. Well, out of that, uh, because you'll be focused on the actual physician medical billing, uh, that's about four and a half, uh, which doesn't sound like a lot until you look at it like a, you know, a stack of $100 bills. <laughs> <laughs> it's a those, lot. Are coming down, those are coming down on top of you pretty heavily there, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they are. They're crushing me. And you know, Patrick, what, I, I might take the opportunity to pause here just for a second. I forgot to uh, check the audio levels with our audience. And so, folks, if you look on uh, your control panel there, you'll see a little hand icon where you can raise your hand. And if you wouldn't mind doing us a favor, we just want to make sure that the audio is coming across, you can hear us. And if you would indicate that just by pressing that hand button, you can raise your hand and let us know that it's actually working for you. Uh, that way we're not just uh, screaming into the, into the okay. air. Thank you, Patrick yeah. and Ron, uh, Yolanda, we appreciate that. Thanks for letting us know, Jake, Alex. Thank yeah, you so much. Good. It looks okay. like we're coming through. So that's it's funny because you and I on here, even though this is live, uh, we don't really have the feedback that you guys have that are out there. And so sometimes we've been talking away, and people are typing stuff in on the uh, que question box there or the chat box saying, "Hey, I can't hear you. Where's the sound?" So that's good. right. All right. So you know, here's another reason, Jason, that the uh, <laughs> I love this picture, don't you? This is truly a retired couple. They're on uh, vacation somewhere. But 10,000 people are retiring daily in the United States. That means they reach the age of 65, theoretically, and go right into retirement. And folks, that many more people, of course, are moving into the healthcare system. So I, I say uh, with a lot, that, along with the, all the uninsured people that are going to move into the system because of uh, the new healthcare system, 
that will be a, a huge uh, influx of people that doctors have to deal with. So ho out of this, hopefully we all look that happy when we get to retirement. <laughs> and that healthy, yeah. yeah. Uh, I found this book uh, a little while back. It's a great book, by the way. Yes, that's really the cover of the book. It looks like a piece of tinfoil or something they're covering. It's really clever the way they did it. But out of this book by Dr. Peter Diamandis, he says, the Association of Medica American Medical Colleges warned recently that the United States could be short uh, 150,000 doctors by the year 2025. 20, now, that's important for you folks to realize that what's happening is that the doctors are going to have to be seeing uh, that many more patients, not only because of the influx of all the people into the system, but because a lot of these doctors are uh, you know, going to be dropping out. Some of them, this is from retirement. Not as many people are uh, going through college to become a doctor and so forth. So. That's uh, that's good news for us because uh, uh, the doctors are going to need our help, you know, that much more. So, uh, why would a doctor outsource their billing? Well, uh, first of all, the main reason you need to really let sink in, folks, is because they can't do it cheaper uh, in house with their own staff and their own uh, software. Uh, a lot of people are under that misconception. You talk to a lot of people, Jason, uh, about that. Is that generally the, the feeling that most people go, Why, well, they, can't they do it themselves? That is, that is probably one of the main reasons. Uh, that's one of the main questions that we get right out of the gate is uh, why in the world would a doctor need me to do their medical billing? And I, that was actually the first question that um, I asked Adam, uh, who's the, the president here now. Uh, when I was coming into the business, we were talking about uh, me possibly joining the team here, and that was my first question. Why in the world would a doctor not just hire someone to do this themselves? And the way that um, I discovered uh, a great answer to that is I talked with licensees uh, from ABS who had actually already gone out and spoken with doctors and had encountered what we know now to be so true, and that is that doctors are having all kinds of trouble managing their, their reimbursement, and we have systems and services that can improve drastically uh, the way that the reimbursement cycle works for doctors. Um, so you, you learn that when you talk to some of our ABS licenses. Yeah, uh, Eric Auger, our Director of Research and Development, said, said it best uh, when he said, Patrick, doctors are trying to run two businesses at one time. One is the healthcare business uh, getting patients well, and the other one is their financial side trying to collect the money from Medicare and uh, the private insurance groups out there. So, yeah, that's right. And of course, a lot of people don't realize that those insurance claims, once they're filed, a lot of them get rejected for all kinds of reasons. Human error, and uh, their system uh, is lousy in double checking things. And so what happens is, as you can see from this quote, 34%, uh, about a third of all those claims that are submitted are rejected. Well. Jason, you've been in uh, the situation where you've seen the doctor's office. There's a dozen people running around like chickens with their heads cut off behind that, you know, bulletproof glass. And it's because they're so busy, folks, that when the rejected claims come back, they don't have time to mess with those and try to figure out what's wrong and resubmit them because today, you know, there's another 50 or 60 claims that, that are coming in. That's right, and it's a snowball effect too. Uh, the more it piles up, the more the the bigger the boulder gets, and it just keeps yeah. rolling and rolling. We actually had a case study from one of our licensees in Colorado, and uh, she was working with a practice. The doctor had a 50% rejection rate, um, which is just insane. I mean, think about if 50% uh, of the work that you did for whatever your job was, you only get co you only got compensated for half of it. That, makes no yeah. sense. And we went in and basically uh, set up a program with that doctor's office that allowed them to keep the doors open. Uh, they were having trouble yeah. making payroll. Yeah, we salvaged that, that practice. Now, this chart is interesting because a lot of people don't really understand what the real hidden costs are for a doctor to do the billing in-house with his own staff. So look at this column here, in-house costs, and you'll see uh, that including the money that he would spend on, let, we've got in this uh, example, one and a half full-time billing employees, that he would spend about 46000 on their salaries. And then with all the benefits and things, the training, uh, we've got some uh, hardware and software ups, updates because, you know, if they have their own software, they've got to keep that updated. They could spend up to $65,000 a year. Well, look at this, guys. Uh, this is just based on a typical doctor having 400 claims a month at, uh, this is for 12 months, at about $100 per claim. And you can charge, as a medical biller, anywhere from 
five to eight percent. That's generally the range that we hear. So we've got in this example six percent to show you that that's only twenty eight thousand dollars. Now, think about that. For you as the medical biller, you're earning twenty eight thousand uh, dollars, and 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 comparing that to a doctor's cost in the house, it would be about forty eight percent less. Quite a savings there. A lot of savings. Yeah. Uh, this quote's interesting too because market analysts it says estimate that the, the 24 cents out of every dollar are wasted on administrative and billing expenses. Now think about that. In in a doctor's office, a quarter out of every dollar that comes in, they're spending on their staff. Now, of course, some of that staff is used to help them see patients, but a huge number, sometimes up to half of their staff, is just you know the billing expenses they're they're messing with the billing and dealing with all that behind the scenes so it's it's a huge waste of money for you working out of your home you have very little overhead remember it's just basically your labor and if you're the person doing the billing yourself you're not you know haven't hired anybody else uh which is very possible uh, for for most licensees they they do the billing themselves for up to you know four or five doctors before they hire somebody you don't really have any costs, and that's why you can do it for you know four to eight percent versus uh, twenty four cents out of every dollar. So for a doctor to even think about doing it himself uh, just doesn't make sense. Here, here's a here's a quote from a U.S. News and World Report uh, from Dr. Vern C. <laughs> I'm not going to pronounce that last name. <laughs> I'm not going to make the attempt either. <laughs> no. He says to do the billing in his own office, it would cost about twenty dollars per claim. And folks, uh, uh, on a hundred dollar claim, if you were charging six percent, and that six dollars, so look at the savings for the doctor just in this aspect alone. That's that's not to count the fact that we could increase. Uh, let me back up. We could reduce that rejection rate we talked about earlier of thirty four percent down to less than two percent. Isn't that what we've seen in our system, Jason? Overall, yeah, that's right. I think it's important to point out that um, nationwide. All American business systems licensees and all doctors that process claims through our system consistently every month it's less than a 3% rejection rate. And so to put it in real dollars, if you've got a doctor who's billing $100,000 a month, if their rejection rate is 34%, that's $34,000 that they're not being reimbursed for because of rejected claims. Uh, we're taking that $34,000 of unrealized reimbursement and we're taking that down to less than $3,000. Uh, so it's a $30,000 improvement in that scenario to the doctor's bottom line, to their cash flow, $30,000 yeah. increase. Yeah. I've got a licensee up in uh, Colorado in the Denver area, Jason, that says her rejection rate in our system is 0.2%. <laughs> so, Not too bad. Yeah. It's 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 amazing because the doctors don't really know what to do, folks. They they know their overhead costs are out of control, but they just don't know what to do about it. Now, I say that actually, some doctors, of course, have decided. You know, it's probably wiser that I turn the billing over to somebody who's a specialist. You know, that that's that's what they do all day long, not just for one doctor, but for several. Uh, uh, but there are some doctors who have kept it in house because maybe maybe they want more control over it. And right. Jason, we kind of solve that that whole problem of of them wanting control with our uh, cloud based system, don't we? Uh, that's right. Uh, the doctor can log on anytime. Uh, they can generate their own reports and even create custom reports if they have really specific metrics that they want to see. Uh, it's it's all set up for them, ac accessible anytime. They can even check it on their phone or their iPad uh, if they're out of the office. Uh, very, very robust system, and it's very accessible. Yeah, so that takes away the main objection uh, that most people have probably in their minds, think that doctors have at least, is that, oh, they're going to lose control of their cash flow. No, with our system, with a cloud-based system where they can log in from any device that's connected to the Internet anywhere in the world 24-7, they have more control. Hopefully a lot less screaming like uh, the lady, the poor lady in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, so we talk a lot about the uh, revenue cycle, Jason. Kind of explain why we came up with this graphic. Well, we came, you up, with came this, up with this graphic. <laughs> well, I don't like to brag or anything. Uh, we, we came up with this graphic because it's important to understand that the revenue cycle is not just billing. Uh, that's just one aspect of it. Um, the that's that's where it starts, 
But then uh, there are many other aspects to the revenue cycle that greatly affect the doctor's bottom line. Uh, you've got the receivables, you know, the collections, the patients who haven't paid. Uh, you've got the reimbursement, which is the, uh, the billing aspect of it. Uh, electronic records, which is um, how the doctor handles their uh, patient encounter, what the, what the doctor actually does when they're sitting in the exam room. And we've got a great solution for that we're going to go over. Uh, payment options, uh, that's for um, patients who, when they are there at the time of service and everything is due and they can't quite make the full payment, uh, we have a service that uh, addresses that and gives some great options. A big area is coding, and uh, we'll demonstrate here in just a little while um, how much we can improve the doctor's reimbursement rates just by tweaking the coding and documentation on each claim. Uh, and then, of course, we have uh, marketing systems for the doctor that are automated and can help generate more uh, patient appointments. And so we address every aspect of their uh, cash flow or their revenue cycle from start to finish. Yeah, so folks, if you're thinking about getting into medical billing and starting your own medical billing company, you can't just go out in the marketplace in today's market and say uh, to a doctor, uh, you know, do you need any billing help? Because uh, <laughs> the general answer is no. No, thank you. Don't need any today. Uh, we do it ourselves. Or maybe they've already decided to outsource it and have another company. So, Jason, the funny thing is to people when they think about that is since that's the case in, in every doctor's office, it's one of the two things, right? They either do it themselves using their own staff and their own software, or they've already decided to outsource. How is it that we see sign-ups from doctors every single day in our office here? Well, that's because we teach our licensees not to go into doctor's offices and ask if they can help with the billing. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's the surest way to get a no answer. Uh, instead, what we teach our licensees is when you're approaching a new practice, a potential client, you present yourself in a different way. Uh, you'd say, hi, my name is Jason. I'm with uh, XYZ Revenue Cycle Management. And what we do is we specialize in uh, revenue cycle management for doctor's offices, and we have eight different services that uh, can improve your bottom line, help you increase your cash flow, increase your reimbursements, and even reclaim some of that lost revenue that you have from patients not paying and insurance companies not paying. Um, if you're interested, we're offering, uh, we op we're opening a new location in this area, and we're offering a free practice analysis that's a $1,000 value to the local doctors here. It takes about 20 minutes, um, and if you'd like, uh, we can set up an appointment where I could come back and take a look at your revenue cycle and, and see uh, how we can improve it. Yeah, so as this great graphic illustrates, <laughs> again, <laughs> I'm using that because Jason's the one who created it, uh, uh, we have not just uh, the medical billing, which is illustrated here by the iClaim, we not only have the electronic medical records that ties in with that, folks, for the doctor to use, but look at all these other services that we have. Now, you can read about some of these on our website, but we're going to actually cover some of those as we go through the webinar today. So when you have these and you walk into a doctor's office, you can use a question like this, could you use an increase of up to 30% in your revenue cycle? Now you're going to get the right response from those <laughs> doctors <laughs> because we have much more than, and we teach you to be much more than just a, a plain old medical biller. So Jason, tell them kind of what they'll be doing. What What is this thing here? Uh, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, Patrick. I just play <laughs> one on TV. Uh, <laughs> This is a, a super bill, or some people call it a, a charge sheet or um, a patient encounter form. And, and, and basically what this is, is uh, this is what comes across uh, for the medical biller to file after the doctor has seen a patient. Yeah, and it's the standard. Look, this is not rocket science. Look, it's uh, patient information, it's insurance company information, and it's some codes that the doctor will give to you. Uh, that you will put into our system to get the money from uh, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, insurance companies, whoever it is. They're just numbers, uh, and you don't have to know these codes because they're all built into our system, and when the doctor gives it to you and you type it into our system, if it doesn't match what he said it was supposed to be, uh, the system tells you that. That's why our rejection rate uh, is less than you know 3%. That's right. So that's why, folks, the advantage is that you're not just using a piece of paper like that. Uh, you're actually using this cloud-based system that does it all in the cloud. Now, I've got a screenshot here so you can kind of see what it looks like. Uh, like any software, it looks just like any software on your screen, but it's actually running through a browser. 
you go to any browser you have on your computer, Internet Explorer, uh, Safari, if you've got a, a Macintosh computer, and then once you've logged into our site with your password and username, you're using the system in real time. And that makes a tremendous difference in the rejection because we're scrubbing and looking at that data before you ever submit the claim uh, online. We've made sure that it's uh, you know 97% uh, clean. Yeah. Uh, okay. So in today's market, the bottom line, folks, is that you will fail if you don't have uh, you know if you're just out there saying that you're a medical billing company. You have to be positioning yourself with the revenue cycle that we told you. And we position you uh, as a medical reimbursement consultant. I think that sounds a lot better than I'm a medical biller. Huh? Much better. The pay is a lot better as a medical reimbursement consultant <laughs> rather right. than a medical biller. Much more professional. So, folks, this is what's different about ABS. We teach you to be a professional out in the marketplace so that you don't really have any competition. I mean, Jason, our licensees tell us all the time, they, they just when they run up across any doctor that's thinking about outsourcing, they don't have the competition that a typical medical billing company would have because they're they're not bidding against uh, uh, you know uh, another billing company. They're they're bringing into the doctor the solution that that's illustrated by all these uh, flyers here uh, that we uh, had somebody create. That's and, right. Uh, somebody somebody did a great job with those, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, so folks, get a raise. yeah. So you. <laughs> I just caught that. Okay, yeah. That person should get a raise, definitely. Uh, so as you can see, we've actually allowed for, on these, a place for you to have your name and logo printed. We actually have a printer who will do that for you, so you get some personalized flyers. But look at how they all look like they tie together in a very corporate way. So folks, th yes, you could start your own medical billing business and create your own marketing flyers on your own computer and printer, but they would not look as professional as these and that you wouldn't have the selection of course for one thing of all the different services that we have here. So let's jump right into uh, this whole subject today and talk about the actual uh, billing. Uh, that's important that people realize that they can actually find out what they can make uh, doing just the medical billing on our website. So uh, why don't you kind of walk us through that uh, Jason as to how they can find that income calculated there. Sure. Well, you just go to uh, absystems.com, our main website. Uh, you hover over income potential, and that first link right there is the medical billing income calculator. And when you click on that, it's going to bring up a screen where you can play around with these figures. And uh, Patrick, I'm sure you'll probably walk us through this example, but it pre-populates uh, those first figures uh, with kind of a standard uh, percentage that we charge and standard number of patients. Uh, but you can play around with that and, and figure out what you would make with one client, five clients, 10 clients, 20 clients. Yeah, because most people don't have any idea as to what to put in here. We just say, well, look, uh, let's say that in, uh, in, in a, a, sh a short period of time, you sign up six doctors. And uh, each one of those doctors has seen about 20 patients a day working five days a week. Now, in this example, we've, we've actually started with a 7% figure here. So on an average claim of $125 at 7%, using these numbers here, this is six doctors, folks, just six doctors, you could end up earning, uh, you know, uh, a five-figure income monthly uh, just from those six offices. Now, Jason, you know that we have licensees who have a whole lot more than six. In fact, uh, we heard from one this week, uh, Steve. You know who I'm talking about that we just talked about. Sure do. Yeah, he signed. He signed up three, uh, three clients in the last couple of weeks. And, and I, uh, I believe he just started with us. Uh, he came through and was it the June class? June, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's got now, uh, let's see if we add all those together, four and then uh, eight and then uh, I think it's 13. 13 medical providers. So you could have uh, three practices, but in those practices you have multiple doctors. We call them providers, medical providers. And so he's got already 13. <laughs> So these numbers for him will be uh, much higher than what you see here. So guys, I don't know if you uh, have thought about this because most people think, oh, well, gosh, I might have to have two or three dozen doctors, you know, make a, a six-figure income. No. As you can see from these numbers, it's easy to get to a six-figure income. Uh, 
working the number again from the example we just showed you. Now, go out to that calculator and play with it yourself. Plug in your own numbers and see what you come up with, and, and you'll see no matter how you do you could cut this number in half uh, and then in half again, and most people will be pretty thrilled with that. Probably replace their you know current income. For many, it sure would. Yeah. Uh, All right. I was I was going to say really quickly when you when you come through that I claim system and you go to EMRX, you were talking about this previously. Um, this has to do with the doctor's enjoyment of the system, which I know you're going to talk about. Um, but it makes a big difference because I wanted to highlight earlier, and you were moving quickly, and I, I let it slide. Um, if you take a look at the abandonment rate for electronic medical record systems or EHR systems, uh, it's so high. Doctors who purchase these huge, expensive, robust EMR and EHR systems, and they're so clunky to use that they abandon them. Uh, I've seen statistics anywhere from 40 to 60 percent of new adopted, uh, newly adopted EMR systems by doctors are abandoned, and they go back to their paper format. Yeah. Uh, just wanted to lead with that one. Well, that's amazing, isn't it? And folks, it, you probably have heard of the term. Uh, it's interchangeable with EHR, electronic health records, electronic medical records, same thing. The, the, the weird thing is that most people don't realize that this is uh, something that doctors can actually get reimbursed from uh, the government. Yeah, they can get up to $39,000 uh, for what they call meaningful use of an electronic medical record system. So, you know, there's some guidelines that they have to follow, certain things that have to be built into that system for them to qualify for this money, but uh, we've seen many, many doctors get checks already from the government, and they don't have to do a thing. They don't have to spend any money at all as long as they're using a system that qualifies for that. So when you tell the doctors as uh, an ABS licensee, that not only can I do your billing for you, but I can give you access to an online, cloud-based, meaningful use certified EMR, uh, they're just blown away. Because these checks come to the doctor, uh, you know, just by, by, by using the system. And of course, we're saving them money on the back end on the billing too. So it's a win-win for the doctor. So guys, if there was ever a window of opportunity, uh, I'd say it's uh, right now. This is the time to get involved in this business and share this with doctors. This is kind of like giving away, uh, you know, uh, snow cones in the Sahara Desert. It doesn't get any easier than this. <laughs> well, the other thing is, you know, like I said, they do get this reimbursement by the government, and that's great, but it's the sy doctors love using our EMRX system. It's uh, very easy to use. It speeds up the patient encounter. Uh, because it allows the doctor to go faster through their screens, um, and they can set it up and customize it so that it fits their their type their type of practice, and uh, it makes it more efficient from the billing standpoint too. Because when the doctor finishes their session with that patient, uh, they just hit submit and it goes to the biller's screen. It's all instant. It's it's web based, and so not only is it an improvement uh, to their bottom line with the uh, government grant, it's also an improvement to their efficiency as well. Yeah, and as illustrated here, folks, our system was actually designed for the uh, Apple iPad. Now, it also works on any other device, any of the tablets that are out there, uh, Surface, uh, the PC to Surface tablet and so forth. But we've got it illustrated here because the doctors absolutely fall in love with this. They've actually had their lab coats uh, redesigned, some of them, so that the pocket actually holds the iPad. So <laughs> while they're seeing the patient, they're actually able to uh, tap on the iPad and uh, enter all the different uh, diagnosis and CPT codes and everything, preparing that for you behind the scenes to actually submit the claim. So it's, it's really cool, the technology that's there. And again, uh, they can do this from anywhere uh, that has a, an internet connection. So let's add that in to the money that we just saw that you could earn just doing medical billing. Now, remember, this is just an example, and uh, our disclaimer is that not all people, uh, not everybody, of course, that gets in our business makes this kind of money. Some make even more, but some make less. So there, that's the fine print. So we've taken for this example, uh, you are able as an ABS licensee to charge a setup fee when you set the doctor up on EMRX. So even if the doctor wasn't interested in outsourcing their billing, you can market the EMRX system to them and get a $1,000 setup fee. Uh, per practice. Then you'll make uh, somewhere around $40, $50 uh, per month 
on each doctor, each provider in the office. So if the, the, if the office has eight providers like this one that Steve just signed up, I just mentioned, uh, then you're making uh, whatever that is, $320 a month on that. Then uh, the, the $120 a month is for three doctors in this illustration. So $120 a month times 12, that's a year's time plus the initial $1,000 uh, profit on the setup is about $2,400. And all you did was introduce the doctor to the system. Now, folks, uh, that means that six practices would earn you about $14,000 in a year's time. And Patrick, so, I want to jump in here real quick and just say, you know, uh, some of our audience, they might see that $1,000 setup fee and say, well, my gosh, that's a lot of money for a doctor to spend on an EMR software. It's actually not. Uh, EMR systems usually the purchase price starts anywhere from ten to twenty thousand dollars, and we've seen them as as high as sixty thousand dollars. Right. And those are for systems that the doctor has implemented and abandoned. Uh, if that right. puts it in perspective, a thousand dollars setup fee is nothing uh, for an EMR system that the doctor actually will use and fall in love with. We've seen licensees uh, charge up to $5,000 setup fees. So right. since that is your business and you can set that at any price that you want, uh, you know, why not? Uh, those doctors would be spending much more than that with most other EMRs out there. And I need to throw this in, Jason, because uh, some people don't realize there are literally hundreds of EMR systems that are out on the, on the market. And how many are qualified for that meaningful use money right now in phase two? Jason, five. Right, that's right. That's us. That we're one of those five. So uh, it's a wonderful. I, I call it leading. Well, even bleeding edge technology because we're way <laughs> right. ahead of uh, any other uh, competition that's out there. Okay. Well, let's jump in here. Wow, it's already three, almost 340, so we need to move right along, don't we? All right, so here's the next uh, service that you could offer to doctors. Uh, Jason mentioned it earlier. A way for the patients to choose to pay out their balance. Now, we're not talking about the insurance money here. We're talking about what the patient owes, which out of, say, $1,000 uh, could be, let's say, $200. Well, maybe that person doesn't have $200, you know, in their checking account, <coughs> or maybe their credit card's maxed out or whatever. They can choose to automatically pay that out over a period of time. Now, that's important that you know this statistic here from the McKinsey and Company, uh, that physicians typically only collect about a half of all the balances from their patients out there, they only collect half. Folks, that's a $60 billion bad debt for doctors because they don't know how to go collect that money from the patients. Uh, everybody's been in that situation, right, Jason? You get a medical bill, and uh, it's not necessarily the first one you write a check for that month, is it? <laughs> it's usually not the first check that you write. You usually want to wait until the third or fourth notice, and I don't know why that is. Uh, what I like to say is, you know, when, when you go to pay at the window and they say, well, uh, Jason, your, your balance today, uh, what you owe is going to be $500. Um, how would you like to pay for that? What am I going to say automatically? I'm going to say, can you bill me later? <laughs> yeah, everybody does. And yeah. most doctor's offices will bill you later. But the trick is, uh, what this st statistic shows is once the patient with that $500 balance walks out that door with the bill me later scenario, the doctor has a 50-50 chance of ever collecting that money. Right. It, that's just straight statistics. And so yep. this, this system addresses that. And folks, with this system, we have seen doctors collect up to 98% of that money. So imagine the increase in revenue. Now, True, at the end of the year, the doctor can write off the, the bad debt, but believe me, they'd, they'd rather have that money in their uh, bank account you know, than, uh, than a, a write-off on their taxes. For sure. All right, so let's see what kind of money could be made uh, with this scenario. Now, you as a licensee make about 5% of each payment. All right, so I've got $2 in there because the average payment uh, from patients on this system is around $40. So... Six practices, each with 200 patients on the choice pay system, could turn out for you uh, to be 1,200 patients times $2. That's $2,400 per month or about $28,000 a year just from this one service alone. Now, guys, remember, we have licensees who, uh, you know, they start out by offering this service. It's, this gets them in the door to talk to the doctor because all doctors know they have a, a, a problem collecting from their patients. They all know that. They just don't know what to do about it. So it's a 
it's a great door opener for them. It is and, a great door opener. And as you can see, it, it can make them some good money, too. All right, so uh, I guess we move on to uh, the next. I think we're going to talk about offer. Quick Collect next. Yes, Quick Collect. Oh, we love this one, don't we? Look at that magnet. Sucking <laughs> that money out. Now, what's this one for? Well, uh, Quick Collect is uh, for those poor doctors that, that do allow the bill me later option, and <laughs> right. the patients walk out the door and they owe that $500 balance. Uh, Quick Collect allows the doctor to go uh, back to those patients who haven't paid their $500, and it puts them in an automated system, and it starts a process that is designed to, uh, with no human intervention in the beginning, uh, collect on that money. Yeah, it is an automated system. That's important that uh, people realize that because, Jason, uh, our licensees don't have to get on the phone and, and call the little old Mrs. Jones and say, uh, yeah. you know, where's that $20 you owe Dr. Smith, you know? Uh, that. <laughs> That's not what this is, guys. It's, you're not a collection agency, and yet this system collects uh, about three times what the average collection agency would collect uh, at, at, a, at a fraction, fraction of the cost. cost. At a fraction <laughs> of the cost, yeah. Yeah, most uh, medical collections is probably the toughest thing that there is out there, uh, and uh, most collection agencies don't collect but about 14%. So, uh, and they charge up to a, uh, up to 50% of what they're collecting to the doctor, we can get this money from the doctor for as little as 5%. Yeah. So the doctors love it, and of course you're going to make money on every uh, on uh, every account as well. Uh, here's an example: six practices with three doctors each, with just 24 patients on this program per month that they're turning over to us, uh, with an average pass due of about $600. We found that's average out there in the marketplace. And like I said, with our collection rate of about 41%, you as an ABS licensee could earn up to $2,000 per month residual income. Now, talk about residual income. What does that mean? What do they have to do for this, Jason? Uh, absolutely nothing. Uh, That's right. All, all they do is once the uh, debtors, <laughs> once they pay their payment, uh, they just have to go in and remove them from the system so they stop getting notices. Right. Yeah, because it is an automated system uh, that does this collections, and uh, the great thing is we call it mailbox money. In other words, every month you as a licensee don't have to do a thing. You just go after your mailbox or look in your checking account uh, online, and, and there's the money. It's deposited right into your account, or, or if you want to check, it can be mailed to you. So it's a wonderful – there's nothing that beats residual income, folks. That could mean from this service, as you can see, uh, another $25,000 a year from that scenario that we just gave you. So guys, as you can see, medical billing is much more profitable. Now remember, we use the term in the title of this webinar, uh, the earning potential, because uh, any business has a potential. It's just that some of them don't have as uh, good a potential as this one does. That's right. Auto card. Yeah. This is, uh, uh, I think you mentioned this earlier in the marketing, in the revenue cycle, marketing for doctors. Uh, this is actually used in two different ways, folks. You can utilize this system to build your business with the doctors. And then once you've got a doctor as a client, you can introduce it for them to actually build their practice, to bring uh, patients back in on a regular basis for checkups and immunizations and so forth. Uh, and so it works in two different ways to make you a lot of money. There is a problem in some doctor's offices out there, especially if they're you know fairly new, of empty waiting rooms. So how do we get the patients to come back in on a regular basis? It's real simple. We use greeting cards. That's right, not an e-card now. This is not electronic. This is a physical printed card that comes in the mail. Our system is an online system that you have access to where you actually can send out the cards, but they are literally printed in full color, mailed out to the patients or to the doctors if you're using it for your marketing. Uh, with yeah, an envelope, a note, stamp, everything. Yeah, these aren't e-cards. Uh, these don't right. show up in their email inbox. These are actual printed cards that show up in their actual real mailbox, even if it's painted white with <laughs> a big red envelope in it. <laughs> yeah, that's why we showed this illustration, because <laughs> everybody loves a greeting card. Nobody throws a greeting card away. And when they open this up, it's that special touch that, you know, in today's world, Jason, uh, email, I don't know about you, but I, I, I look at my email with my finger over the delete button. 
you know. Absolutely. Uh, but but real mail that comes in the mail, nobody throws away a green card. That could be a a, a card from your aunt Matilda with five dollars in it, you know. So the system has eighteen thousand different cards that you can choose from, and here's the great thing. You can personalize these with exactly the message on the inside that the doctor tells you to put in there. And we have a whole series of campaigns, we call them, that are already pre-designed for you to use. So again, we can't go into all the detail here about this that I'd love to because I'm really, I love this system and so do our licensees. But ask your ABS rep a little bit more about this or read about it there in our uh, virtual brochure. Meanwhile, we've got to move on so you can see how much money you can make from the auto card system. Now, in this particular instance, we're using that same six practices with three doctors, each with about 200 patients on the auto card system. Now, a lot of doctors have, you know, six and eight and nine thousand patients. But with just 200 patients, uh, that's 3,600 cards being mailed out. You earn about a dollar per card, or you could be earning about $3,600 per month. Again, there's that magical term residual income. Folks, that's another $43,000 a year just from AutoCard, and that's just for using it uh, to help the doctors market. It has nothing to do with the fact that you can use it to automatically stay in touch with your prospective doctors and get them to sign up with you uh, as a client. That's right. It's important to point out, too, just uh, to reiterate, that's a set it and forget it type of system. Uh, you set that's up right. the campaigns, you choose the cards, and you step back, and AutoCard takes care of the rest. Uh, yeah. No licking envelopes or stamps. It's all done uh, on your behalf by uh, their warehouses. Yeah, the technology uh, think, that we have behind the scenes does all that for you. Mm -hmm. That's right. I, I think the next one we're going to talk about, Patrick, is uh, the iDocs Now service that we have. Yeah. Tell them about that. Well, um, as you can imagine, uh, as doctors are required to keep all of these records from patients, assuming that they don't have a wonderful EMR system like our EMRX, uh, they have something that looks like this photo here, uh, just an ocean of <laughs> folders that they have to stick in file cabinets. And our iDocs Now uh, solution is a great one for doctors. It allows them to convert those files uh, from paper into a searchable electronic format. And I'll let you talk a little more about the details of that one. Yeah, all you do, folks, is uh, we actually, when you set a doctor up on this system, you're actually providing a little scanner that will scan in up to 20, 30 pages a, a minute, uh, and both sides, and stores those electronically in the cloud. In other words, the doctor and his staff and you, as the medical biller, can access all of these documents live online. Now, I say you because if you're using this system, as most of our licensees do, to get all of your documents from the doctor electronically, there is no paper. There's no mailing. There's no FedEx. You don't have to go buy and pick it up or anything. It's all scanned in into the cloud. You log into iDocs now from anywhere in the world that has a browser and Internet connection, and you're able to see the document right there on your screen. You can mark it up. You can uh, mail it, uh, email it, you can print it, whatever you want to do with it. But it's a wonderful way to always be able to find documents on any patient anywhere in the system. Now, folks, this is so high tech that there are many, many other companies that could utilize this system besides medical providers. Lots of businesses would love to go completely paperless. Uh, ask the people there in uh, New Orleans, you know, when uh, Katrina hit, what happened to all their paper? It was gone. Not with I, uh, iDocs now because it's up there in the cloud. So you can provide this to, do to the doctor, and yes, you make money on this one as well. So let's take our six practices with three doctors that we've been using. You can earn around $1,400 a month in residual income from those doctors using our system. Again, you're not doing anything. That's money you earn from them using the system each month and paying the fees associated with it. So there's another $17,000. Uh, $280 from just the iDocs now. Again, I wish I had time to really, really go into detail about all these. I hope I'm winning your appetite enough to uh, get back with Jason or uh, another one of our reps there at our office that can tell you more about that uh, in detail. And there's a lot more detailed information on the virtual brochure, too. So if any of you in the audience haven't uh, gotten access to the virtual brochure, make sure and contact your rep and they can walk you through that. Uh, Patrick, I think the next one we're going to move into is Audit Guard, and uh, we can talk a little bit about how 
that can help doctors protect themselves from, from audits. Yeah, sometimes doctors uh, are audited. I should say they'll all eventually be audited probably by Medicare to make sure that their coding is correct. Well, folks, this actually solves that problem by pre-auditing the doctors uh, a certain number of their charts, their patient records, so that they can make sure that they are not overcoding. They can get slapped some huge fines from Medicare, up to $10,000 per uh, infraction. So this protects them against this, and it sometimes stops the underbilling because once our certified medical coders who, who do this service for you, of course, behind the scenes, once they check the code, sometimes the doctor is not coding as he should to receive the money that should be due him illegally. So uh, we can we can we use it for both things. Uh, you've all seen the codes probably on a doctor's uh, super bill. Uh, this is a super bill here. Just all doctors' super bills look a little different. But I'm going to zoom in here so you can see the codes on this one. Again, electronically, you're receiving this from the doctor. Uh, in most cases, like this one, he would just circle the codes that you see there, and that's what you would enter into our billing system to bill for the doctor. If those codes are not correct, the doctor could be either fined by Medicare or leave money on the table. So our certified medical coders behind the scenes will actually examine uh, a number of charts from the doctor and come up with this printed report that breaks down exactly what they found, showing the doctor where they're losing money and where their danger codes are that they might be looked at by Medicare if they're overcharging. There's another aspect of this that's important too, and uh, I'll just highlight it. Uh, also, they go into detail about the documentation along with each of the claims that's filed, that, that's reviewed. And uh, uh, if, if they're using the right code but not providing the accurate documentation to support um, the code that they've used, then it might be paid out at a lower level or they could be in violation. So these are very in-depth reviews, and they discover all kinds of different ways that we can uh, improve the reimbursement. Yeah, that's right. Uh, for example, in this is illustration you're seeing right here, this revenue impact, we can increase the doctor's revenue by 4.6% uh, because we looked at the codes and said, look, for what you are billing, you should be using this code, which could get you a little bit more money. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it's $54,000 a year. That's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. And that'll, that'll make uh, payroll for one of their employees. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, yeah. So anyway, that's provided to the doctor. And then our certified medical coders will get on a conference call with the doctor and review this very carefully. This is a very easy uh, entry into a doctor's office because they all know that they could be uh, audited by Medicare at any moment. And they're scared of it. They just don't know how to prepare for it. This is the way that you do that for the doctor. So. Let's illustrate the income potential for uh, Audit Guard with 50 charts reviewed per doctor. That's 50 patient charts. Uh, you could earn around $900 per review. Now, in most cases, uh, let's take our six practices with three doctors. Each doctor usually has a review each quarter. So that's four reviews per year for these doctors. A total of 18 doctors in our illustration here times four reviews. That's 72 reviews. Now remember, at $900 per review that you're earning for basically just introducing it to the doctor, not doing any of the work, of course, our, our chart uh, coders do that for you. Guys, you could earn another $64,000 just from this, uh, this illustrated uh, example that we just gave you here. So there is big money in medical billing is what we hope you're getting from this webinar, and it doesn't just come from filing the insurance claims, uh, at least with American business systems. And if I could jump in, one real quick thing here. I know we're running out of time, and we're trying to get through all of these services. Audit Guard oh, wow, is a yeah. great its a great door opener for introducing yourself to a practice. If yes. uh, the physician hasn't had an audit of their patient files uh, in the last five or ten years, or maybe since they opened their practice, this is a great way for you to offer a service that is a, it's a quick, uh, easy way to demonstrate a really high value that you can bring to their practice. Right. And once you've uh, gotten inside of a doctor's office with one of these other services, folks, then you're there, right? You, you, you're now their friend. You're not a stranger. And when things change in their billing situation, maybe the office manager finds another job you know, for a dollar an hour or more somewhere else, all of a sudden, you're the one that they're going to think of if you've done the follow-up and stayed in contact with them like we teach you in our training. 
All right, so let's move quickly through Code Right. Code Right is similar to the audit guard done by the same certified medical coders that we have. And basically, folks, we can increase the doctor's revenue, sometimes up to 30%, by finding out that the codes that he's giving to you are not the correct codes. Remember, as the doctor gets that super bill to you, uh, those codes are examined on a regular basis, not just for an audit, but on a regular basis to make sure that the doctor really is charging what they should be charging. Uh, so this code right examines those codes, uh, and, and the reason that's important is because, as you can see from this quote here, uh, most doctors undercode, uh, and that means that if they're undercoding, then they're leaving money on the table, and this is a great service that ties in with Audit Guard that can solve that. Uh, so, as you can see, the average physician could increase their monthly billing by about 30% if their medical uh, coding was done accurately. The codes are built into our system, as I said earlier. Here's another screenshot from our system, and as you can see, here are the codes that you would normally type into these little fields right down here in our system, but by typing in a code or a description here, uh, our system looks those codes up. Uh, gosh, I don't know how many there are uh, right now in the ICD-9 codes. I think there's about 18,000 codes. That's going to go up to about 180,000 codes. So 10 times the number of codes as the new codes come out next year. The point for you guys is you don't have to know anything about that. The codes are here, and you can verify that the codes are correct. Another report is also provided with code right that goes into the detail for the doctor to make sure that he understands exactly how this service can benefit him. So what kind of money can be made from this service? Well, again, with our six practices and three doctors example, if you reviewed 400 claims per month for this doctor on code right, you only earn about 50 cents per code, but gosh, for 18 doctors, that's $3,600 a month. Again, residual, there's that magic term, residual income. And folks, that's another $43,000 a year bottom line. Now, let's just summarize real quick so we can wrap up here. From all the different services that we just covered, I just, uh, in case you didn't write down all the figures, here they all are, and those do come up to uh, over a half a million dollars a year. Now, folks, remember, that is a potential that if you use, uh, in the illustrations we just gave you, that's the kind of money that can be made. I'm trying to illustrate that most people have a very limited view of what uh, could be earned doing just the insurance billing. And as you can see from this example, it's uh, easy to make a whole lot more than that from uh, if you have all the services that we have. So who are your potential clients out there? Well, folks, it's every medical provider out there, every doctor that's filing insurance claims on what they call the 1500 form. That was that red form that we showed you earlier. And so these are just some of the, uh, I didn't even have room for all the specialties that are out there, but guys, don't just think in terms of your uh, local family doctor. There's lots and lots of uh, uh, different specialties. And uh, Jason, why don't you tell them about their territory? It's kind of restricted, isn't it? Yeah, we get this question a lot. Um, uh, if you're looking into franchises, I'm sure one of the first parts of the conversation is uh, where can I market? And, you know, you want to have a, a good market where you can launch your business. But we don't have territories. Um, you can market anywhere in the U.S., uh, any of the 50 states, even in Puerto Rico. And... Uh, uh, Anywhere that you can find doctors, those doctors can be your clients. Uh, we don't have restrictions because uh, it's very easy for our licensees to, to move around. They can be mobile in their business, and you can operate your business remotely so you don't have to have employees in the state where you're doing business. Uh, most of our more successful licensees have usually, of course, uh, they have clients in their, their hometown, but they also, by word of mouth, uh, they get uh, clients out of state as well and uh, it, it wouldn't make sense for us to have any kind of limiting factor there. Right. You might be in Florida, for example, and sign up a doctor there, but that doctor gives you a referral to a doctor in uh, Idaho or Montana. Uh, it's easy for doctors to refer you to their friends that they know that are in the medical field because you're doing a good job. Assuming you're doing what we teach you to do, uh, they'll be thrilled with what you've done for their revenue and refer you to other doctors as well. Yeah, if well, you're improving we, reimbursement rates by 30% and they're billing $100,000 a month, that $30,000 a month is something they're probably going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, um, 
guys, the only thing I want to say about this is that uh, the lady that you see there in the picture, that's one of our licensees, Cynthia Anderson. Uh, she, we, we, have a li we fly in a licensee to do the training. Now, our staff, of course, is involved in the training intricately throughout the whole week as well. But we want you to hear from somebody who's actually out there in the marketplace running their business, having gone through the same training that you've gone through, and uh, can testify to you that it's a real business and give you some examples throughout the week as to how they built their business. And we oh. love to see everybody out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so guys, uh, do your due diligence. We know that this is not something you make a decision on after seeing a webinar like this. So, we just encourage you to continue to come to these webinars. We do them every Wednesday at 3 p.m. They're live. They are recorded, of course. So, you can provide a link or go back and see them if you missed them, and give a link to uh, any of your partners or spouses or something like that. But get in contact with us. There's our phone number. If you haven't talked to a live human being, we're really here right now. Well, I'm not. I'm working out of my home today. But uh, I'm here. Jason's <laughs> there. Yeah. yeah. And somebody will answer the phone and refer you to uh, a rep that can answer all your questions live uh, so that you can get all your questions answered. Now, Jason, I always promise people this. I'm going to stop the recording. 